Welcome back, listeners, to a brand new episode of the New Standard. And I'm bringing you the program on the weekend of the NCAA tournament. Before we hop into the program, I want to give a big shout out to Pops and the Duquesne Dukes for reaching the round of 32. And by the way, my bracket is looking extra crispy. You know, I got a flame. If you guys are doing your brackets on ESPN, if your bracket is as outstanding as mine is, they put a flame by your bracket. My bracket has a flame. I'm probably around 98%. I have a flame. I'm El Fuego. So I hope everybody out there is enjoying the tournament. Please, if you take a break from the tournament and you're a Steeler fan, please Take a listen to this week's episode of The New Standard. And the name of the program is Ken Russell Wilson Cook with the Steelers Ingredients. And as always, please like and subscribe to the program. You can find the program on YouTube by doing a search for Lance Williams and or Neil Kulong and The New Standard. Also, you can find us however you get your podcast by doing the search of the same Want to give a big shout out to Neil. Congratulations to him. He came back from bars and he is back on earth doing his thing. I will let him announce uh, where he is uh, residing and where he is doing his thing. But welcome back. He is back on the planet earth, back from Lake Minnetonka. He is back. But before we jump into the program, can Russell cook with the Steelers ingredients? I just want to say one thing. If you eat chitza, and let me explain what chitza is. Chitza is this chicken pizza created by KFC. Now, the crust is a chicken breast with some mozzarella sauce some cheese, and some pepperonis. Let me just say this. Man, if you eat chitza, it's okay. You ain't got to listen to my show. I can't have no degenerate listening to my program that eats GMO synthetic pizza that has a chicken breast as the crust. No chitza fans on this particular show. But let's jump into the program. Before we jump into it, please, again, hit me with a like and subscribe. And so the title of the program is, Can Russell Wilson Cook with the Steelers' Ingredients? Before we can answer that question, we have to answer the question, will Tomlin let Russ cook? Will Tomlin let Russ cook? Or will Tomlin put the handlebars and the brakes on the Steelers offense and not let Russ cook. Cause we all know. And if you were watching the NCAA tournament, you saw Russell Wilson watching his alumni or his alumnus NC state, get a victory over Oakland. And, and that's an interesting question because a guy that listened to the show, I forget, I, I think that his handle is slow boss. And I think slow boss said, and slow boss always centers me back when thinking too optimistically about Mike Tomlin. And he said, no, he's not going to let Russ cook. He's going to let Russ hand the ball off, check it down, and not turn it over. Now, I think there's some credence to that. Now, I, we didn't see that under Ben Roethlisberger, but, but that was because Ben Roethlisberger earned Mike Tomlin's trust, won him a Super Bowl, got him to another, won a bunch of games. I think he trusted Ben Roethlisberger to make the correct decisions with the football. It'll be interesting, given Russell Wilson's pedigree, nine-time Pro Bowl, uh, Super Bowl winner, let Russ cook. The brand is established in the National Football League if he is going to let Russ cook. 
Because the one thing we know is if Russ turns it over, he not letting Russ cook anything. He wouldn't let Russ cook grits. He wouldn't let Russ cook with your utensils or ingredients in your kitchen. He would have Russ handing it off on first and second down, taking check downs, similarly to what Sean Payton had him doing. But So don't get discombobulated by the stats that you saw Russ had. There's a lot of check downs in that offense. You know, he was throwing the ball within five yards of the line of scrimmage and throwing it behind the line of scrimmage a lot, and they were running it a ton. I don't know if that's because Sean Payton didn't trust Russ or let Russ cook, but a lot of Russ's touchdown came from outside the numbers. There wasn't a lot of offense in the intermediate zones of the football field, and so I don't think he trusted Russ to throw it over the middle of the football field, and it seemed like Russ didn't like it. But the one thing we will know with Tomlin is he he ain't going to put up with somebody turning the ball over. And ultimately, I think we have to understand is, is although this is Arthur Smith's offense, again, please hit that like and subscribe button. You're checking out the new standard. Can Russell Wilson cook with the Steelers ingredients? Although it's Arthur Smith's offense, I think what we found out, and the more you learn about the game, you find out that the offense is ultimately the head coach's offense. Whatever the head coach wants the offense to be and to look like, the head coach has a right and will really dictate the direction of the offense. So to slow boss's point, if Russ is not turning it over, I think Tomlin will let Russ cook. I think the allure of having Russell Wilson as your starter is he is a veteran that you can trust to take care of the football. Does Russ take sacks? Obviously. You see how I worked that in? Obviously. Well, you get it. 50 sacks last year. Takes way too many sacks. Gets out of the pocket, in my opinion, way too fast. But if he does not turn over the ball, Tomlin will put the utensils in his hand And let him cook. And if he doesn't turn it over, not only will I think Mike Tomlin will let Russ cook, he will let Arthur Smith create the menu. So it'll be Arthur creating the menu. Russ will be cooking. It'll be a prefix menu for the appetizer. It'll be a Caesar salad. You'll get a roll. You'll get some iced tea, maybe some water, uh, For the appetizer, you also get a lobster bisque. They'll give you some pasta, some angel hair, maybe throw in a steak. Anyway, you you know where I'm getting to. Tomlin has two unknowns that he's working with in the offense. So don't be surprised if Tomlin puts some clamps on the offense until Arthur Smith and Russell Wilson prove to him that they can manage it, that they're not going to turn the football over, that they're not going to lose the Steelers' football games. So there's a lot of moving parts that I think are going to be in play as the Steelers move forward with this offense. And if there was one thing that cowardly Kenny, Kenny trepidation, if there was one thing that he was good at, He was good at not turning over the football. That was his secret power. That was the thing that he did better than anything else. Superpower was not turning over the football. Regardless of we think him being cowardly Kenny, Kenny trepidation, cucky Ken. uh, I mean, he didn't turn the ball over. So not that Kenny won you a bunch of games. Kenny didn't lose you a bunch of games. And that that is a that is a qualification that you need with your starting quarterback. Can't lose your games, but you want your quarterback to be able to win you some games and make some plays. Kenny did not turn over the football. That was his superpower. But uh, shift left really quickly on Kenny 
uh, anyway, Kenny's going to have to compete for the backup spot because it looks like Philadelphia signed Will Greer to a one-year contract. I'm wondering if uh, Kenny Trepidation, cowardly Kenny, is going to uh, request a trade uh, because he's going to have to compete for the backup spot. But anyway, again, like and subscribe to the program, The New Standard, Ken Russell cook with the Steelers ingredients. And so that gets us into the question of just what are Russ's ingredients? Do the Steelers have the requisite ingredients for Russ to be able to cook? Now let's take a step back. You're at 64,000 foot. You look at the offensive line. I think right now we can all agree the offensive line is incomplete. Why do I say that? There is no starting center. Cole is not on the roster. I don't even think they have a backup on the roster. You have no starting you have no starting center. You look at the receiver position. They signed uh Van Jefferson from the Rams in the offseason, but he's a guy that got like 45 targets approximately and they have George Pickens. And that that's not enough. You've got Calvin Austin as well. That's not enough. That's not a ton of weapons, in my opinion, at the receiver position. I think in the running game, you have two solid backs. And you have a very good tight end, in my opinion. You have a tight end that's on the come that I think can be better and and be that type of tight end, not Travis Kelsey, but a step below. So when you look at these ingredients, you got a, I don't know if you got eggs because you got an incomplete offensive line. Uh, You know, you got some pasta, you got a couple strips of bacon. You can put it all together. You got a little bit of flour, but you definitely do not have the ingredients to cook a five-star menu or meal like you would if you were a chef at the French Laundry. He might be a line chef at Olive Garden with these ingredients. So the question about does Russ have the ingredients to cook? I'm going to say at the start of spring, going into the 2024-25 season, I'm not sure Russ has the ingredients he needs to cook to make a souffle, a suffle to make that shepherd's pie, to make mama's greens, to make that succulent barbecue that you get at the cookout. I'm not sure the ingredients are in the cupboard or in the pantry or in the kitchen for Russ to cook. I think he can make a solid meal with what the Steelers have, but can he cook that 27 to 30 point a game meal? Can he cook a 24 to 30 point meal? Or is he kicking a upgrade from 17.9 points per game to a 22 point meal? And, 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 and even if the Steelers offense jumped from 18 points a game to 22 points a game, let's say 23 if I'm feeling frisky, that's an incredible accomplishment. I mean, that's a plus five points. That's almost a touchdown more worth of scoring over the course of the season. Now, some of that might play itself out where you have a couple of big games where you get 35-40? Wait, could a Steeler offense get 35 or 40? Now, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that type of jump in the offense from 18 points a game to like 22. 22 and a half, 23. Because more importantly, more than anything, I think the defensive additions that they've added during the offseason, I think the defense is still solid. I still think we're in a world where the Steelers will not give up more than 20 points a game. But that point differential has to be five and above, in my opinion, for the Steelers to effectively compete for a championship so can Russell cook with the Steelers ingredients yeah it's what type of meal can he cook 
I mean, he definitely can cook you some Vienna sausage. He'll cook that. He'll definitely cook you a grilled cheese, maybe a quesadilla. Uh, but is he cooking you a three course or a four course? Is he cooking you the prefix meal? I don't know if the Steelers got the ingredients for him to cook you the three courser that you take your wife to after 15 year anniversary. I don't know if he got the ingredients to do all that, but the, but it can't be. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how this is going to look and what, and, and how this is going to shift, but for sure, he's going to have to prove and Arthur Smith is going to have to prove that Mike Tomlin, they can take care of the football before he can cook anything fancy. You got to show Mike you can boil water before you can make some pasta. Before we get out of here, I want to shift reels real quick to there was a post uh, from SteelersNow.com uh, about the Steelers drafting a number one overall pick. And I think the headline was, Will the Steelers draft not draft a, a wide receiver because they may hurt George Pickens' feelings? And you know, when I read that, I was like, "Is that where sports journalism is going now?" I mean, we're talking about feelings, nothing more. But since we're talking about feelings. I think one thing, and I've heard this from others, is that, think about it this way. In a building in which Cowardly Ken was jettisoned to the eastern part of Pennsylvania because they did not like competition, do you think George Pickens, even if he was in his fields, that they went and got a first round wide receiver out of the draft would express his displeasure? Nah, I think if he's smart enough, he would not, and he would keep that close to the vest. But what I've heard from some others is that, you know, an organization will get your temperature. But that's not going to make them, that won't prevent them from drafting a first round wide receiver if they see fit. I mean, you guys remember when Mike Tomlin told Willie Parker, uh, when Willie Parker was asking about running the football more, and Mike Tomlin told Willie Parker, I don't see uh, six rushing titles in this hallway. So, one thing I will say with Mike Tomlin, get in your feels if you want. But you better not show him that you're not willing to compete. But I think George Pickens is of a stature and has a talent level to where George is going to get targets. I, I you know, it would be amazing to see a wide receiver come into uh, the Steelers team that would compel you to not get George Pickens the ball. I mean, I think it would have to be somebody at the level of a Justin Jefferson. I can't imagine it would be somebody out of the draft that would limit his targets. And if you found somebody that good, hell, it might be a great thing. And if you found somebody that good to make you say George Pickens is the number two, then you're cooking with gas and anything else, any other heating element. So I just want to touch on that. And, and before I get out of here, there, there was also a story that was posted about the Steelers position groups and, and the defense and offensive side of the ball in terms of cost that the Steelers defense from a cap perspective is the largest in the national football league. And the offense is the cheapest around $68 million. And it's largely because of the quarterback position. I mean, you look at the quarterback position, they've got Justin Fields on a rookie contract. They don't have a third sign and they've got Russell Wilson on a vet man. On a defensive side, you've got TJ Watt, you've got Cam Hayward, you got Minka Fitzpatrick's deal. So your defense is going to be, it's going to be tilted in terms of a cap percentage to your defense. The question I have, though, when you see those numbers and you read that article is, can the Steelers weaponize 
having the cheapest quarterback room in the National Football League? Can they parlay that into player acquisition to be able to enhance and bring the ingredients into Pittsburgh that Russell Wilson needs to cook? Because when you got a cheap quarterback room, that should be a secret power for you. That should be an advantage for your team if you have a cheap quarterback room that can play. And so we're going to see if the con artist working with a very manageable offense and a very cost-friendly quarterback room, if he can parlay that to some caviar, some foie gras, lobster, and some high-end ingredients to let Chef Russ do his thing. But with that, we're going to conclude the program. And as always, tune in, tell a friend, and subscribe. Go Steelers.